1 Corinthians 13, and uh, Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, have not charity, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, I understand all mystery and all knowledge. And though I have the gift of all faith, so that I can remove mountains. And have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all of my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity falleth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, speaketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But where there be prophecies, they shall fail, where there be tongues, thou shalt cease, where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. We know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even also am I known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Chapter 14, verse 1, the first three words says, Father after charity. Of course, we know the, the word charity just simply means love. Uh, in, in the Bible, God puts a lot of emphasis on love. Right here, in fact, the Bible talks about in 1 John chapter 4, God is love. Amen. And really and truly, you cannot really experience true love unless you have God in your heart. Amen. The world does not know true love. And... Uh, uh, people do not know it because they don't have God. And the only way to have true love is to have God. Amen. Amen. And because he says God is love. Here he puts a lot of emphasis on this. In verse 1 of this chapter, he says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. In other words, he said, If I could speak every language that there was, nowhere you could send me, no country you could send me, uh, uh, that I could not speak the language. If I had all that ability... To speak every language that there was and communicate with every man that could that I uh, that could I uh, could communicate with nobody I could not talk to and speak their language, uh, the government would probably want me to be one of their representatives. But God said, if I had that ability and had no love, I was nothing but a sound and brass and a tinkling cymbal. Chapter or verse number two, He said, though I have the gift of prophecy. In other words, he said, if I, if I had the gift and I could prophesy, I could prophesy things and it would come to pass and had that much power, that much ability, even though uh, people would think it was really a great thing that you could prophesy things and it come to pass, yet without love, he said, I'd be nothing. He said, if I understood all mysteries, you know what mystery is? Mystery is something that, that's got a missing link to it. The mysteries of your life, the mysteries of our world, uh, it's something that's got a missing link. And if I could, if I had the ability to take all the mysteries of your life and all the mysteries of the world and pull and figure out that missing link and solve the mysteries, and I had all that power, had no love, God said I'd be nothing. Then he talks about, he said, if I had all knowledge. In other words, he said, if I, if I knowed everything there was to know. I've seen some people like that. They thought they had known everything. Amen. Uh, some preachers think they know everything. But, uh, but God said, if I had all knowledge, in other words, there's nothing you could ask me that I couldn't answer. No conversation that could come up that I could not enter into. If I had all knowledge, I knowed everything about everything, and had no love in my heart, God said I would be nothing. And then he goes on and says, if I had all faith, all faith, so that I could remove mountains. I had so much faith, literally speaking, if I had so much faith, I could say to these mountains, be thou removed, or the mountains, you know, somebody said, I'm facing a mountain in my life, and I could say, and had so much faith, I could move the mountains in your life, and had no love, God said, I'd be nothing. Nothing is a zero with all the edges eat off of it. Just nothing. So he said, I'd be a, without love, I'd be a sound and brass and tinkle silver. He said, without love, I'd be nothing. Verse 3 says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, <coughs> though I give my body to be burned, have not charity, it probably. God said, if I gave everything I had away to the poor, 
and did not do it with love and hadn't had no love in my heart, it would be profit me nothing. He said, even if I died, died a death and gave my body to be burned at the stake, died a martyr's death and did not do it out of love, God said it would profit me nothing. So God puts a lot of emphasis on love. In fact, in the Revelation chapter 2, you remember what he said? He talked about them, and let me just read it right quick. I won't read it, but he talks about, uh, in Revelation chapter 2, he's talking about the church of Ephesus. He said, I know thy works, and thy labors, and thy patience, and thou canst not bear them which are evil, hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and found them liars, has bored, and, and for patience, uh, has patience for my name's sake, has labored, not fainted. He talks about what a great work they was doing, and all the activities was going on and all the involvement they had but he said nevertheless I have something against you he left you for his love he said you're a working church you're a church that stand against sin and all this stuff but said you're lacking one thing and that's the love of God in our hearts amen and he goes on and on and on about love out through the Bible uh, I, I thought about this somebody said the, the greatest love is a mother's love that brings forth a child and and uh, uh, loves that child and raises that child. But we know that's not true because many mothers are aborting and many mothers are forsaking uh, their children. Somebody said the greatest love is the father's love that, that uh, brings forth children in this world. And they love and, and they work and labor and support and raise those kids. But we know that's not true because many fathers today are abusing their kids and many fathers have forsaken their kids and and refuse to pay child support and help their kids. And so we know that a father's love and a mother's love is, is not the greatest of love. Somebody said lovers is love is the greatest love where two people come together uh, in love and matrimony and marry. And we know that's not true because the divorce courts are full today of people that claim to be in the love. Amen. But my friend, the greatest love is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. No, no greater love than the love that God had and bestowed. I read in Romans, he said, God bestowed his love upon us in our hearts. The God the Bible said, the Holy Ghost has uh, shed the love of God in our hearts. And the greatest love we can know is the love that God has for us. Sometimes we, we uh, have the vows. I, I've used this illustration before. The little boy and girl getting married went before the preacher and uh, was talking, and, and, and the preacher read them the vows, you know, love and honor and church and obey and all that stuff. And, uh, and the little boy said, that won't work. That won't work. And he said, what do you mean it won't work? I've married all kinds of couples with these vows. And he said, it won't work. It don't say nothing about her darning my socks. It don't say nothing about her cooking the meals and uh, cleaning the house. And, and the little girl got him by the hand and said, that don't have to be on that paper. I'll do that because of the love I have for you in my heart. And Paul said in Romans, the love of Christ constraineth us. I think some people work because they're obligated. They feel obligated. They feel the necessity. I tell you what, we're to work for God because we love God. And the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. Amen. And, and I, I think about I think about a pastor one time. I read this in the book. A pastor had a he had a room built up uh, in the top in the in the kind of the attic of his house, and he built him a little room up there, and he called it the sky room. And and he'd go up there and just get away, and go up there and just pray, and take his Bible and read and pray up there in what they call the sky room. And said he was going one day, had a lot of problems going on, a lot of things going on. He was just busy and exhausted, and he said, "I'm going to." He told his wife that I'm going to the sky room and said uh, don't nobody bother me so don't let nobody come up there I'm going up there and he's kind of aggravated some of the things that's going on and he, just wanted, he said I'm going to the sky room and don't bother me yet and he got up there in the sky room and he little had a had a little knock at the door and his little old girl slipped up there knocked on the door and he jerked the door open he said what do you want said I told I told y'all don't come up here and bother me and she said I don't want nothing said I just passing by and I want to tell you that I love you <laughs> And he said he, he hugged her, closed the door. And when he closed the door, he said, Brother Josh, he fell on his face and God, God, I don't want nothing, God. I just want to tell you that I love you. Amen. I'm going to tell you, love is a great factor in our hearts and in our lives. I'm going to preach for just a few minutes on three kinds of love. Three kinds of love. I'll give it to you and we'll go. Three kinds of love. First of all, I'm going to say there's the if kind of love. The if kind of love. This is the kind of love that has to be earned. This is the kind of love that meets certain requirements. This is the kind of love that's got strains attached to it. 
uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. If you're a good father, we'll love you. If you give me gifts, we'll love you. If you become successful in Portland, I'll love you. If you promise to marry me, I'll love you. If you come up to my expectation, I'll love you. It's a, it's a love that's a conditional love. It offers its love in exchange for something else. Sometimes I think we have that kind of love. God, if you'll do this, if you'll do that, we'll love you, we'll stay faithful, we'll stay in church, and we'll keep loving you if you do this and if you do that. It's an if kind of love. And you know what? If you start that if kind of love, you've got to keep those ifs up from now on. <laughs> I, I thought about this, you know, when you're, when you're married, when you're marrying somebody. Can you imagine, can you imagine uh, my friend getting, uh, Brother Josh and, and uh, uh, Tina, is that right, uh, 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 getting married? Uh, and he, he says, well, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, she looks at him and says, well, I'll tell you what. If, <laughs> if you'll buy me a new car every year, and if. You'll give me a credit card unlimited and I can buy all the clothes I want. And if you do this, I'll marry you. And my friend, you know, if I was Brother Josh, I'd say, forget it, I'm out of here. Amen? Uh -huh. Because if you marry somebody on ifs, you've got to keep them ifs up from now on. Amen? Uh, there they ain't a man in here stupid enough. Well, uh, uh, let me just say there is a few probably in the world that's stupid enough to do that. But there ain't nobody going to marry anybody, even if it was turned around the other way. And the man said, if you do this and if you do that, uh, I'll marry you. My friend, there's the if, uh, it's a condition. Uh, and we sometimes look at God and say, God, if you'll answer my prayer, if you'll supply my need, if you'll take care of all it, if you'll do this and do that, I'll marry you, I'll serve you, I'll live for you. I tell you, the if kind of love is really not a good kind of love love. I thought about this, you know. Uh, uh, me and Kay, me and Kay, we've been married, soon be married 50 years, and, and uh, can you imagine? I, I've traveled all the time on the road, and, and y'all know that, but a lot of times she couldn't go. She's raising the kids and different reasons she couldn't go. Traveled a lot by myself in the first of our ministry. Can you imagine, Brother John, if I if I was at the house sometime, and, 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 and I made a list, and, and, and had it up on the door, and and Josh, you come by the house, and you say, "Kay, what's the, what's the preacher?" And said he's gone. Well, what's that list out there? Well, that's a list of stuff that he give me. If if uh, you keep the house clean, and if you do this, and if you do that, I, I, when I get back, I'll look at the list and you check it all off. And if you got all that done, I'll come on back in and stay a little while longer with you. <laughs> come on now, help me out, huh? I'm afraid sometimes we got our little list we're holding up to God. Lord, if you'll do this and if you'll do that, if you don't, I ain't going. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I, I got a preacher friend. I got a preacher friend. He's a young preacher, and, and you pray for him. He's gonna learn, and uh, he'll learn the hard way, like we all did. Uh, but you know, he told me. He said, "I'm telling you right now." He's a young evangelist. He said, "I'm telling you right now." He said, "I'm going to these meetings and everything." He said, "If they don't give me the, a, a, a nice motel, and if they don't give me this and do that," he said, "I ain't a going." He said, "I just don't feel like that. I have to go, and that they'll do better than that." And I told him, I said, "Son, you ain't gonna make it." I said, "Man, when we started, we stayed in Sunday school rooms." I, I said, "I slept up over top of the Bible tree." I said, I slept on uh, in Sunday school rooms. Uh, I fed on uh, uh, army cots. Uh, I said, Ma, you go. It ain't what they do for you. It ain't if you do this, I'm a coming. And you go because the love of Christ constrains you. Uh, and my friend, whatever comes, you just do it because uh, of the love of God that's in your heart. Uh, if, if you do this and do that. Come on now, help me out, huh? I thought about this, my friend. My friend, the vows, it's in our hearts. We quote them vows and we say those vows. And my friend, if we put a bunch of ifs on the end of it, my friend, it would be no good. It has to be earned. In other words, you have to, you have to earn my love. Amen? You have to earn that. If, I, if you want to keep me, <laughs> uh, if you want me to stay here, uh, I, I seen the thing a while back and it talked about this lady was going, wanting to uh, marry and she said I want to marry somebody rich <laughs> I thought well, well if God wants you to marry somebody poor that's what Sidney's waiting on somebody rich <laughs> he going to take somebody rich to take care of her amen <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding you, Sandy. You know, but, uh, you know, somebody said, well, I want to marry this. And I want to marry that. You know, they, they, they get that ill, that quality sticking in there, that condition. Now, if this happens, that happens. They got condition. That's what some of you still single for. You got too many conditions. Amen. God may want you to be poor. 
God may want you to be rich. God may want you to live, my friend, in Africa in a tent somewhere. He may want you to live, my friend. It don't matter what, matter, whatever God wants you. It's not if you do this. If you work this out, you ought to love God out of your heart and the love of Christ constrain you to love for God no matter what he puts you in and situation he puts you in. If you don't believe it, ask the missionary. He'll tell you the truth. <laughs> Amen. So well, there's that if kind of love that has to be earned. Then there's that because of kind of love. The if kind of love has to be earned. It has a strange attached to it. It has a conditional love attached to it. The, the, the because of kind of love has to be enjoyed. A person loves somebody because of who he is. Or, or, or something he is or something he has or something he does. It's a quality or a condition that sticks out in that person that draws him to that love. Amen. Love them because of this. I, I wrote a few, a few examples down. I love you because you're lovely. Well, that could change. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble right here. Someone said, I love her because she's so pretty and she just got such a well figure and she's just so slim and so pretty. Well, don't worry about it. Don't marry her because in a few years that's going to change. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so a few years ago, they ain't going to stay slim all that time. Amen. After three or four kids, they ain't going to look the same. Amen. If they get hold of them, they ain't going to look the same. Amen. Their styles is going to change. And then you can't marry somebody. Boy, I love him because he's so handsome. Look at that beautiful hair. Good thing she didn't marry Slick because of his hair. <laughs> He'd be over with. Amen. Huh? Her love would be gone. <laughs> I've been picking on you, Slick. Uh, my friend, I love him because he's got nice wavy hair. Well, he may lose it. Say amen, brother. <laughs> He may lose it. You may minds are spinning out, and, and you know what it is. If they love somebody because of that quality, I love you because you're loved. I love you because you're good to me. I love you because you're so different. I love you because you're popular or wealthy or famous or successful. My friend, all that could change, and if it changed, your love would be so strong. Right. I love God because He's good to me. <laughs> I love my dad when He's good to me. I also loved Him when He's beat the devil out of me. Uh, we've had good times in our life. There's times we could eat steaks. There's times we had to eat baloney. <laughs> there's times there wasn't no steaks around. There's times, you know this, I've told this before, there's times all we had was Campbell's soup. And if our love, if I, her love for me had been on the condition, if you keep steaks on the table, I love you because you cut the, you, you do this and you do that, and I failed to do those because of that, my love is the struggle. Uh, let me give you let me give you an illustration. This is a crude illustration. I made it up myself. <laughs> you remember you remember when you said high school? <laughs> remember when you were in high school? Been to your probably remember this. Excuse this, brother. Huh? Remember when you were in high school? Here come the quarterback, football team. Flaming down the hall, slouches all get out, flaming down the hall. And you see them girls, you may have seen them girls, they lay on the floor, oh, there he comes. <laughs> they say, oh, the quarterback. Here comes uh, John, he's the quarterback. Oh, they all dream of dating the quarterback. And everybody wants to date the quarterback. He's the quarterback. And, and boy, if you get to go to the problem with the quarterback, you're success. Uh, but you know, ain't nobody. You, you, you ever heard anybody in school, you ever heard anybody in school say, oh, here he comes. Say, who? The water the water boy. <laughs> oh, here comes the water boy. Oh, man. I hope he asks me out to the prom. Amen. <laughs> See, you ever done that? You ever leaned up against the wall over and say, oh, Lord, here comes the water boy. I, I hope he asks me for a date. You know why? He ain't important enough. There's nothing that sticks out in his life. He's just a water boy. You never hear the football team now. Hey, the great water boy's on the field. Get them water. But they knew the quarterback, and it ain't because they love the quarterback for who he is. It's the position he holds because of what he does. They love it, but when the quarterback's over, the love is gone if that's all you got. You can't love God. So as I love God because he done this or done that. I love God because he blessed me. What if he don't bless you? I love God because he didn't see supply my needs. What if he don't supply your needs? I love God because he healed me. What if he don't heal you? Then your, then your love is destroyed. 
Amen. I read about in the book one time about this Japanese girl, and she, she was a beautiful girl, and uh, she, she won all kinds of beauty contests everywhere. Went all over the country winning beauty contests. And the, and the other girls, when she showed up, it said, the story said, the other girls said, well, there ain't no hope for us. She wins them all. And the little boy married her because of her beauty and because of the success she had. And she car wreck. Scarred her face up. Messed her up for life. Couldn't do no beauty king or queen no more. Contest no more. And she wasn't beautiful. And her scars was all messed up. And her face was all messed up. And her body was messed up. And my friend, it wasn't long till her husband left her. It wasn't long till other people forsook her. My friend, you know what? They loved her because of her beauty. He loved her because of the success. He loved her because of the money she was bringing in. But when that was gone, her love, his love was over with. I'll tell you what, my friend. It ain't always a good time. It ain't always good things in heaven. But I tell you, you don't love God because this or that. Uh, you love God but not because of now there is some things because of it's okay but you don't fully love because of this uh, one preacher told me he said I, I love my church he said because they're good to me <laughs> I said well that could change <laughs> and if it changes you'll find out most preachers start putting their, their uh, what, what do you call it honey when you put your, something in for somebody else hi yeah, you put your resignation in and you start looking for somewhere else. Because they don't buy your they can't afford to buy your car now. <laughs> they gotta cut your salary. Amen. Come on now. All you preachers out there in a wonderful land, say amen. <laughs> That's right. I tell you what, you don't pass your church because they're good to you. You pass your church because God put you there. And my friend, if you got ten, you love them and you preach to them. And if you got a hundred or five thousand, you preach to them because God put you there. Not because of the benefits you got. It's because you love God. I had a lady called, uh, she's a member of Southern Baptist Church. And, and, uh, and I'm not against that, but that's, I'm just telling you what she was. And she called me. And she called and was talking. And she said, hey, he said, she, can you recommend a preacher? Can you recommend a preacher? We can't find a pastor. Said, all these young preachers come in and said, they start telling us what they want. And this church takes care of their pastor well. They come in with their list. I got to have this. I got to have that. I got to have this salary. And I got to have this. And I want to sign a contract and, uh, that I can stay here so many years. And, and I want retirement. And I want all this stuff. And my friend, she said, See, that, that's a turn off. Uh, my friend, we take care of our preacher. But they come in now. The only reason they're going to come and the only way is because of what we're going to do for them. They don't come in saying what we're gonna, they're going to do for us uh, and how they're going to help us. Uh, they just come in wanting to know, but, but we'll take this church because you're going to do this or do that. And she said, we can't find a preacher. I'm going to tell you, where's the old time? preacher when you go to church and you go to pastor of church you go because God put you there and he put the love of God in your heart for those people amen I've been preaching 55 years today today is my 55 year anniversary for preaching and I honestly say I pastored four churches and I never know what they're going to pay me I wouldn't even let them tell me until God put it in my heart to take the church I didn't want to know I didn't want that to influence me I've never asked nobody to let me come preach. I've never showed up on nobody. I've never called and said, hey, I ain't got no word to preach. Can I come by and preach for you? Never done that. Never asked no word to preach. From the day I started preaching, God opened doors. He's always opened doors. He puts me where he wants. It's amazing. It's amazing how it works. Somebody can cancel. I've had people cancel out. Say, preacher, we can't have you. Uh, something, you know, some, something's come up in the church or something happened. And preacher, we're going to have to book you later. And it canceled. And the next day, somebody had come and said, can you come this week? It's just amazing how God works all that out. And my friend, listen, I'll tell you what. I'm not going because that. I'm not going because, hey, hey, hey I'm not tooting my own horn. But you can ask Kay back Man, we, we go, we preach the nine. We got called me the other day. He said, Brother Goodson, will you come back and preach the meeting for it? He said, We still got the same nine. And I said, well, Yeah, I'll come. He said, You know why we like for you to come? I said, Why? He said, You preach the nine just like the house is full. He said, You preach just like it's packed out. I'll tell you what, my friend, we don't love God because of this or that. I'm thankful for what He does for us. I'm thankful for His blessings. But I'll tell you what, my friend, when the hard times come, you just keep on living for God. You keep on serving God. Through many dangers, toys and snares. I have already come. Tis grace that brought it. Take this far and grace will lead me on. We got people want to go to church because of God's a blessing. Because they're doing that. I'll tell you what's going to happen when the church goes down. What's going to happen, my friend, when the crowd leaves. What's going to happen when problems come. You're going to walk off. <laughs> Amen. 
Come on now, help me out. I've seen people like that. Blessing this church, they'll run over there. When it dies down, the blessings over here, they'll take off over there. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, with experience, with experience, marriage, 50 years being K, it ain't always highlights. <laughs> the sun will always shine. Uh, there's some hard days and hard times, hard knocks, some good times and hard times. Huh? And if I had it on the if and she failed one, I can walk out. That's like, a, I hope you ain't got one of these, but like this, uh, what's that word, honey? Pretty what? Pretty nuts. I'm glad she come in time. I don't, can't say nothing. <laughs> I have trouble. I've just had that stroke. I have trouble saying these words. Pretty nuts, is that what it is? Well, whatever it is. Anyway, you ever see people say, well, they're going to sign all that pretty nuts stuff. I tell you what, I ain't signing nothing. If you don't love me out of your own heart, forget it. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine, brother missionary? Hope you ain't done this. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine your wife come here and say, "Hey, now we're gonna get married, but here's a list. Here's, here's some things. Uh, this is mine, and that's yours, and this is mine, and that's yours, and blah blah blah." Uh, and my friend, listen, uh, uh, all this and all this stuff. And I'll tell you what, uh, I, I wouldn't marry like that. Amen. It's not my friend, this and that, and if and because my friend, listen, there's no way, my friend, you can serve God with that because if it ever breaks, it, if that condition ever breaks, uh, if it ever changes, uh, your life is over. It's destroyed. Uh, well, we, me and Kate, we cut up all the time anyway. We got in a place a while back, Brittany. And about, about toward the end of last year, we got in a place, and we right in a row, brother. And, and, and let me just say this in passing. Don't everybody take care of a preacher like Emmanuel Baptist Church does. And I'm going to tell you another thing. God has blessed this church because of that. Amen. Everybody don't take care of you, <laughs> Mr. You know that. Uh, and we got it. We'd been in several places, like Brother Doug take care of us. You know, we, we'd been in several places, put us up in big, nice motels and everything. And we ended up in a rough place. <laughs> it wasn't good. It really wasn't good. My wife, she don't complain much, but she said, I should have stayed home on this trip. <laughs> I said, I should have stayed with you. <laughs> <laughs> the room beside us, they moved out because they had bed bugs. They said, you know they're going to move over here. It was bad. We got in bed that night. We was laying there in the dark, <laughs> trying to go to sleep. And I, I, told, I know it was just funny. I said, honey, are we suffering for Jesus? <laughs> I said, we've had it good all this time, and now we're suffering. I, she, I said, what? She said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to tough it out. I said, we're going to pray God to keep him bugs in that other room. And we're going to pray, my friend, that everything will be okay. And we can preach to God. Hey, it ain't always going to be a blood of roses. It ain't always going to work like you want. And if you got the deal, if you got the because of, you'll never make it in loving God and serving God. Well, let me, let me finish up. Not only is that if kind of love, it has to be earned. There's that because of kind of love. It has to be enjoyed. You know, and let me say something else. Because of kind of love has to compete with others. You know, it's like the new baby has to compete with the, you know, the first baby has to compute, compete with the second baby. Come on now, help me out. If you ain't careful, the first baby becomes the, the babysitter for the second baby. The first baby ain't a babysitter. Hello. <laughs> You're a big girl now. Mama needs to go but take a break and you watch her. Well, you had her, you watch her. <laughs> she's the babysitter. She's a kid. They get, they, they get put on duty. <laughs> I can tell you right now, there's kids like that like here, and mama's just like that right here. I can you just feel it. Uh, the first one has to compete with the new one. They go, oh, look at the baby. And the other one's standing over here. It don't ever get a hug. It don't get no attention no more. Even grandma don't pay no attention to it. The new baby's here. There's a competition going on. You know what? That's something I said. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> the wife has to compete with the secretary at work. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. <laughs> Sometimes the secretary wins. You know why? All he ever sees is you in that old same house coat you've had for 30 years. It's got three holes in it. 
Your hair, when he comes home, your hair's blowed up like it looks like explosion in the master's factory. You got the same old house coat on you wore for 30 years, and you wonder why he looks at the secretary so much. <laughs> and all the time you ever fix up so when you're going out with somebody else. Run around with your friends. Come on now, help me out. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. I never did think hair rollers was beautiful, did y'all? I'm saying, why'd you compliment your secretary? Had nice hair. I said, well, who can compliment rollers? <laughs> oh, Lordy, I'm in trouble. Uh, uh, let me give you a sense straight before I move on. I remember years ago, I was preaching a meeting down in, in, in Memphis, Tennessee, where Elvis is, you know, from. He, they got that, what, what is that, what's that called? Graceland. I know y'all know that. Graceland. And Graceland was right across the street. There was Shoney's across the street. I don't know if it's still there or not, but there was a Shoney's across the street. Graceland was over here. And, and the pastor I was preaching for, we went to Shoney's to eat breakfast. And they was lined up down the sidewalk. And I said, I said, what are they doing? He said, that's Graceland over there. I didn't even know what Graceland was. I said, what's Graceland? He said, that's, that's Elvis Presley's place. I said, oh. And I seen them all lined up and over there. And so we come out and they all lined up going in. I said, let's go over there. He said, all right. So we went over and got in line. And we're standing in line. And, and, uh, and I could tell that preacher didn't want to be there. And I didn't know why I was there. But there's a woman, two, women, uh, two ladies in front of me. You know what she said? She standing there. She said, I love him. I just loved him. And, and you know me. I, I'm, I'm nosy. She said that about three times. And I walked up and said, ma'am, I said, can I ask you a question? I said, I'm Preacher Goodson. I said, I'm up from Kingston, Tennessee. And I said, can I ask you a question? And she said, okay. I said, did you ever meet Elvis? No. Did you ever see him in person? No. I said, did you ever go to one of his concerts? No. I said, so all you ever seen him is on TV? I heard him on the radio. She said, yeah. I said, how in the world can you love him? You don't know him. You ain't seen him. You haven't ever even faced him in person. You just think you love him. You love who he is, uh, his image, uh, not who he really is. That preacher said, let's go, let's go. <laughs> we got out of there. Well, I was, and it, it upset me. I, I mean, she was just all tore up, just nervous wreck. I love it. And never met him. There's that if, kind of love. It has to be earned. There's that, that, that uh, because of kind of love, it has to be enjoyed thoroughly. This is the best. It's that there's that in spite of kind of love. This is the kind of love that has that deep inner peace. Uh, uh, this is the kind of love that's different from all other loves. This is a love that's not deserved. It's not earned. It's love as is. In spite of faults, in spite of ignorance, in spite of bad habits, in spite of evil records, in spite of whatever's going on in your life, you love somebody, you look beyond that, and in spite of all that, you love them. It's more important than food. Clothes, home, family, wealth, success, fame. It's just love as is. <laughs> and me and Kay fell in love. We didn't have nothing. Nothing. Did, we didn't, Mom. We had a, I, I had a Mustang when I come back from Vietnam. And I got malaria and lost it. While I'm in here dating, we didn't date for three months. And I lost that because I couldn't keep it up because I had malaria. And I was in the hospital and they put me back in and couldn't do nothing for three months, and so I lost my last day. My, bo my brother took it and had an old 56 forward. Had glass packs old slick when you let off on it. Wow, 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 wow. We'd pull him in churches. Wow, 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 you know. Had a heater switch on it. The heater was broke, so I put a light switch thing on it. You flip it on, and we let it run so hot you couldn't breathe, and then we cut it off, and we got some cold with shaking, then we'd flip it back on. <laughs> old 56 forward running up and down the road. <laughs> That's all we had. That's all we owned. Living in a little old trailer over there. We didn't even have a bed. A bedroom suit. All we had was a mattress laid in the floor. We had air conditioning. We had a fan at the bottom of it blowing on us. <laughs> at the dollar store and got sheets and hung them up over the, over the windows. Amen. First year we was married, we had to go to the laundromat all the time. Man, who look, I hate the laundromat, don't you? Had to go to the laundromat. And we finally had to, we got our tax back the first year. We bought some washing machine. Still had to go back to the laundromat and dry them. 
Down there one day, one day, you know, you know how we are, fellas. Uh, we don't fold them. I just, you know, you just get them out of the thing and throw them in there and take them home. Well, you know, she said, hey, if you're my husband, said, you'd be, you'd be uh, folding them. And I said, listen, I said, I came down there one time and dried them. I said, start folding them. I'll be washing them. I am not folding them. I'm going to the house. Amen. Oh, that old laundry mat out going in. And then the next year, we got us a dryer. Now kids, has got to, they got to start out with everything now. Kids got to start, they got to have everything we got. We didn't have nothing, but we had each other. <laughs> I'm glad she didn't fall in love with what I had. I'm glad I wasn't rich. Fell in love with money because she'd be gone now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> amen. I'm glad she didn't fall in love with a nice slim Jim because she'd been gone now. Uh, but in spite of all the things that we didn't have, we had each other. We loved each other. Man, and man, you know, every time we'd get something, we'd appreciate that. You know, and God bless us, and God's been good to us, and we got a little house over there now. It's paid for. You know what? We're still together because our love was not in the things that we had or what we had to offer. Our love fell in love each other with our hearts. And I'll tell you what, my friend, it made it through all these trials. We got that in spite of kind of love. She told me the other day, she told me the other day, she said, she, you know, she had hip surgery replacement. She had knee replacement. She had both her ankles fused and a lot of things she can't do. And uh, she can't mop, so I learned to mop. And I always told her, I said, I don't do vacuum cleaners. I was helping a guy the other day at the car lot. Better had a heart, heart surgery and he asked me if I'd come by and help him uh, a day or two. And I said, yeah, I'm off. And I went by there and he said, preacher said, do you mind vacuuming the front here? And I was a vacuum. I said, don't tell Kay, and I'm running this vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you know what he did? He took a picture behind me and sent it to her. <laughs> I got home. She said, eh, hey, I got you. <laughs> it's in the closet. <laughs> I know I'm being a little humorous this morning, but, but you know what? My friend, it, it, it's not. It's, it, and she told me, she said, she said, I know you get tired. She said, I know you get tired of having to do this and do that and help me here. It's just automatic, and, and I'm, I, I do it because I love it. When I come up on a curb, it's like when I come up on a curb, you know, I just stop. She's behind me. I walk a little fast. She does. I stop because I know she can't get off that curb, and she'll get me by the arm, step off that curb. When we come back, I stop. She gets me by the arm, puts me in the curb. I got a stool for her, help her get in the car, and stuff like that. And, and you know, and she said, I know you get to I said, hey, I don't get tired of it. I said, you know why I don't get tired of it? I said, it's not what you can do. It calls me to love you. I love you in my heart. I, I, I want to help you. I want to do those things. And, and, and the, some things I can't do that she, she uh, does for me because, you know what, it's because of that love. It's, and in spite of our handicaps, in spite of the things that we got going in our life, in spite of this or that, we love each other because it wasn't because of something that ill for something because in spite of everything, we loved each other. This is the kind of love that changes the intents of your heart. This is the kind of love that never grows old, never enough. This is the kind of love that don't expect nothing back. You ever heard somebody say, well, I'll do this for you, you've got to do this for me. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Huh? Change it. Come on now. It, it, it's what, love ain't a swap thing. Amen. We ain't the swap meat. <laughs> Amen. This in spite of kind of, it, you know, you know, ain't you glad God has that kind of love? Let me just water here before I finish. If it had been up to us, there's some of you. If it had been up to me, that's some of you would never got to go to heaven. <laughs> if it had been up to some of y'all, I would never got to go to heaven. <laughs> there's a lot of drugs and dope heads and harlots and all that kind of stuff. They would never got to go to heaven because I wouldn't have cared whether they went or not. Right. <laughs> ain't you glad the Bible said, for God so loved the world? Yeah. 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 Ain't, ain't, ain't you glad it didn't matter who you was, what you was, what side of the track you was on? I got a new song I've been listening to. I give it to Brittany. And uh, if y'all want to know where all these songs come from, I sent them to her. It come on there in the name of that song was God Don't Care. And they, then the guy was announced. He said, we're going to sell you a song. He said, God don't care. Some of you may have heard it. said, God don't care. I thought, well, that, that ain't a good title. The boy, Sister Brittany, I sent it to her. 
you know, in, 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 in was it him? I can't even remember his name. Mr. Brittany. <laughs> he said, he said, well, that ain't a good song. That ain't a good title or something. And I said the same thing. But well, when they played it, it talked about my friend, the heart of low lives and how sorry he was that God didn't care what shape we was in. Thank God. He loved us anyway. He died for us anyway. Thank God when he stretched himself out on Calvary, he didn't look and say, I tell you, old slack ain't worth dying for. I'm glad to thank you, God, that he died for whosoever will. It don't matter who you are, what side of the track you're from, where you come from. God didn't have that if kind of love. If you'll straighten your life up, he didn't have it. He said, in spite of who you are, in spite of what you've done, God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believed in him should not perish, but however less. Aren't you glad God's got that in spite of kind of life? I tell my grandkids all the time, I hug them and tell them, I say, it don't matter what you do. It don't matter what you do. I want you to always be good and be right. But if you get tripped up somewhere, you're always welcome to come bump us none of the house. Just thought of something. I just thought of something. I'm taking your time now, Joshua. I just thought of something. Let me tell you, this will be a blessing. This will help you. My boy, Kevin. I don't know if I can get through this or not. Y'all remember a few years ago when I came up here, my boy was in trouble. Messed up. Had a, had a, had a friend of his took a pistol shot and blow his brain out and my boy sat beside him. My boy went off the deep end. Got the drinking. Doping around. Got in it. Cut deep, deep in sin. And I worked with him, prayed for him. Never cast him out, never throw him away. His bed was still at the house. He's welcome to sleep there. Mom fixed his food. We loved him, take care of him, lost his license. We drove him back and forth. He broke our heart, but Josh broke our heart. We prayed and prayed and worked and talked and prayed and prayed and worked and talked. He met this little girl, and, and uh, they got married. She got him back in church. Got, after he got back in church, he realized she wouldn't even she wouldn't save. He realized he wouldn't save. And they got saved one night down the altar. Whole life changed. Never missed a service. Never missed a service. We loved him all the way through. And last Sunday, last Sunday, I preached his ordination as a deacon. <laughs> They called me on the phone, and the preacher called me and said, Brother Mike, said, we're going to ordain your son. And two other guys said, would you do the privilege of coming preaching the message at the ordination of service? I busted out of the ball, and I said, it'd be an honor. I hung the phone up, and Kay said, who died? I said, need nobody died. Somebody's a living. Hello, boys are living for God, and we're going to go down there. Hey, I'm telling you, I'm glad I didn't have any if kind of love of that, but I'm glad in spite of who he was and what he done. Hey, God, God turned him around, and I got the blessing of preaching. That on a nation, I say, that may not bless you, but that blesses me. You say, how do you get that kind of love? God put that love. The Holy Ghost shed that love in my heart. He causes me to love people like that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Glory. <laughs> I remember up in Hartford, Tennessee, preaching a meeting up there years ago. Me and my dad was up there sitting at the people's table eating supper. And this lady was telling us about her boy. He broke her heart. And then made, he brought shame on their name and shame on their home. And, and she's dumping her load out on us, me and dad. We were sitting there to, eating. And the car pulled up. And immediately that woman got up off the table, cleared the place off the table, put an extra chair there, put a table or a plate on the table. Here come that boy walking in that she had just talked about breaking their heart and destroying their name and, and all the problems he's going through. Just talked about him. He walks in that house. She said, Son, come on in, we're eating. I already got a plate for you. I looked at that little mom and I said, in spite of all the things, in spite of her brokenness, she loved that boy. Boy, aren't you glad in spite of who he was and what we are, God loved us. Aren't you glad God didn't say, give us a bunch of conditions. If you'll do this and do that, I'll save you. I'll forgive you. I'll do this. Aren't you glad God said, didn't say, because of this and because of that, because in spite. <laughs> in spite of who we was and what we are.
and what goes on in our life, He loved us. This kind of love is no ifs, no because love, but in spite of. Let me give this, and I'm through. I remember, I remember reading in one of Michael Angel's, Angel's books. He told about this. He told about this guy that uh, that was a uh, went to work in a mill. A mill. Uh, he was looking for a wife, and he went to work in a little mill factory. All women sewing mill thing, and he went down and got him a job. His job slick was just cleaning up. They sat in line and sold, and, and his job was to go through there and clean up all the mess and everything, and clean up and everything. That was his job, kind of like a janitor job. And day by day, he'd, he'd sweep through there and clean up everything, and there's a little girl down on the end, and he'd always stop talk to her just a minute. And day by day, he'd talk to her, and she'd talk to him. And little by little, he kept cleaning and kept cleaning, and uh, dressed ragged and poor and... and uh, and little by little, the more we talked to her, the more they got in conversation. Finally got up enough nerve to ask her out. She consented and went out with him. He had an old team model car, dressed all ragged, and they went out and on dates. And they'd go down there and half meals. She'd say, well, we're just half a meal. You know, we don't make much. And day by day, little by little, they dated. He went alone and fell in love. And he's going, he asked her to marry and said, so he was going to get married. And I thought it would just be a simple wedding. He went down there and rented this big old, big old, uh, what do they call them things? Well, they probably got that too. But what's them places, Mama, that they rent, you know, and have weddings in? Huh? That's fine enough. Hall. I never got married in the hall, but, but uh, anyway, they had this, rented this big old place to get married. And she said, you know, she said, honey, she said, what'd you do that for? I said, we, we can't afford this. Oh, he said, it'd be all right. And he got he sent her a, a nice wedding dress. Thousands of dollars paid for it. He, she said, we'll never get out of debt. Never get out of debt. Gave her a big old diamond ring. She couldn't even hold her hand up. It just dropped. <laughs> I'll tell you what the book said. She said, we'll never get out. We'll never get out. And said they went ahead and got married. And when they went out, they got in the limousine. Pulled off. And he took her and said they winded up and went on this trip and got a and they winded up way up right up in the mountains and they pulled up in this big old big old palace and pulled in and she said what is it he said this is this is where we're going to spend our honeymoon and they went in and man the chandeliers and gold everything fancy he finally told her he said honey this is all ours she said he said I'm not just a poor janitor he said I'm a millionaire and said if I'd have come down there in the limousines if I'd have came down there and all this, you probably would have never fell in love with me. I said, you didn't fall in love with what I had. You fell in love with me. The little boy sweeping the floors. <laughs> and said, because of that, all this is yours. <laughs> I tell you, when I fell in love with Jesus, I didn't fall in love with the King of glory. I didn't fall in love with God sitting on the throne. But I fell in love, my friend, with the Savior hanging on the cross, crucified, bleeding, and born and tired, nothing ready to look upon. I, but I fell in love with Him because He loved me and was died for me and was made a, made a plan for me. And thank God when I got saved, guess what? He said, hey, you're saved. Now, everything I got yours. I, everything. And more. Hey, hey, the best, the best is yet to come. <laughs> But ain't you glad? Ain't you glad for that in spite of God? In spite of who we was, what we wanted, what we had to offer. <laughs> for God so loved the world. Gave his only begotten Son, who said, believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hey, I'm going to tell you, don't serve God because if. Or because. But in spite of whatever goes on, I want to die that way. I started that way. I want to die that way. I will never. I don't want to never. You know. I say this respectfully. There's some people. There's some guys that's just got the old timers. You say too big for their britches. They won't go and preach in some churches because they can't take care of them. They won't do this and won't do that. They can't do this. Can't. I won't ever be that kind of preacher. Always, if somebody calls, if I got it open, I'll go. Amen. You ought to be that kind of Christian. If God don't never do nothing else for you, in spite 
Huh? If he never does nothing else for you, you just want to serve. He's done done enough for you. Serve him until Jesus comes. Amen. There's that if it has to be earned. There's that because of has to be enjoyed. But that in spite of has that deep inner peace. In spite of the conditions, in spite of what's going on. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.